What's up everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today I will be adding to my collection of Star Wars blasters. And by collection, I mean I'll be going from one to two. So I made this a couple years ago before I had the YouTube channel, so fortunately no video of me making it. But this is Han Solo's blaster, the DL-44. And I'm going to be doing the Mandalorian's blaster from The Mandalorian. I actually started this video about six months ago when the show was actually, when season two was still airing. So before we cut back to six months ago, before I started 3D printing my second blaster, not this one, the one you're going to see, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because sometimes I don't post for a few months like this video and that little bell will tell you when I post so you won't miss it. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, otherwise three random seconds throughout the video just won't be there and you'll miss them completely and they're very important, three seconds. Not three seconds in a row, three individual seconds. If you don't click those two buttons, then you won't get to see those three seconds. And there's one extra second that you'll get to see if you click the notification bell. So, without further, without, further, without further ado, let's cut back to six months ago when I started 3D printing the Mandalorian's blaster. So, while I could CAD this blaster completely from scratch, I don't have to because this guy right here has already done it for me and saves me a bunch of time. I, do have the skills necessary to go through all the pictures and do all the research and CAD this from scratch. This is here for free. I'll put a link to it in the description. I got the first piece printing here. It's going well so far. And if you've seen my last 3D printing video, the Iron Man helmet, you'll notice I have a different printer now. The old one broke. So this is new, the Ender 5 from Creality. First piece is done. Got the barrel. It's actually really smooth. I'm really impressed with this printer. I think I might just do all the rest of the pieces all at once. It'll be like 30 hour print. So here's the really long print. You can see it's day and seven hours, but it's got all the rest of the parts except for the handles. Cause at this point I haven't yet decided whether I'm gonna make them out of wood or just print them and paint them to look like wood. Starting the longest print I've ever done, approximately one day and seven hours. All right, so now all the parts are printed, look pretty good. Now I'm gonna do two things to try and set this apart from all the other thousands, hundreds or thousands of people who've taken these files and 3D printed and painted these. So first, I'm gonna be using wood for the handles. Uh, I did actually print the grips, but that's just as a reference. So I'll put actual wood handles and weather them. And the other thing is, uh, I'm gonna put weights in it. And the reason is, if you've ever held anything 3D printed, you know they're really, really light. This thing weighs like a couple of grams. And an actual gun or Star Wars blaster are made of metal and therefore weigh a couple pounds. So I'm gonna be putting lead into this. Uh, I did something similar with my Han Solo blaster. There's a bit of empty space, I put some steel in it, but it's not perfectly weighted. It's a little better. I could just buy a lead shot, but that's boring and costs money. So instead, I got an old car battery. This is a lead acid battery, and I'm gonna crack it open and pull the lead out. Now I was originally saving this for an upcoming project, but that project has been put on hold due to COVID but it'll be a cool one that when that comes out. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that project. Don't try this at home. This thing is full of sulfuric acid, which is pretty dangerous. I do have experience in chem labs, so I should know what I'm doing. I've got a whole bunch of baking soda here to neutralize the acid. So I'm gonna crack it open, dump the uh, acid and all the parts into baking soda. As I said, again, don't try this at home. I've got a welding jacket on as a lab coat just because if this splashes on my shirt, it could bleach it and I like my shirt and I don't want to ruin it. I've got goggles and gloves. I popped open the refill things and dropped that in there. Anything I take off of here will get dumped straight into the baking soda. I'm just gonna try and dump the acid into this baking soda solution very carefully. Don't try this at home. I am a I'm not gonna say an expert, but I'm a professional. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm a professional. I've been paid. You can hear all that fizzing from the acid being neutralized by the baking soda. This thing is pretty heavy. It's like 40 something pounds. And now I'm gonna try and get this top off so I can get the lead out. Pulling out the first of the lead into the neutralizing solution it goes. I've gotten everything out of there pretty much and it's all in here now. And I'm just gonna keep sprinkling this in until it stops fizzing. All right, for absolutely no reason at all, it is now six months later. Don't know why, don't ask. Uh, so here we go. I've got all the parts printed and mostly sanded. I've got them all knurled out here. So I've been sanding this off camera because you don't want to watch that. I'm pretty close to being ready for the filler primer, but what I'm gonna do now 
is you see these areas that I've colored in, I'm gonna cut open, and those are gonna be areas where I can put the lead. I'm gonna put lead in the handle, I'm gonna put it in this area. I am also gonna drill this out, stick some in there. I may put some into this barrel. You get the point. So I'm just gonna do the fast version and shake it. And there we go. I've cut a hole out of the handle and I've cut a slot up here. And I have also drilled out the center of this thing. Now a lot of these little pieces, I do not wanna have to deal with. So if I can, I'm gonna glue them together now before doing my first coat of filler primer. I've got a few sections stuck together. I'm just gonna hit them with this filler primer. I hope I have enough to all this out. Try not to spend any more money on this project. You get the point. Let's go melt some lead. So here's my lead. I got a hot plate, I got off Amazon. A pot that I got from Goodwill. I'm gonna try three things here. I've got those pie tins, little muffin tins over there that I can pour any excess into. I'm gonna try casting in wood, just a cylinder that's gonna go in that part I drilled out. And I've got a bucket of water and I'm gonna try dribbling the lead into the water trying to essentially make little BBs, and then I can mix that with epoxy and shove it in all the little holes. And I'm outside in a well-ventilated area. I was actually having some problems melting this stuff here. And my theory is, is it's just too contaminated and I wasn't getting good contact with the lead to melt it because of all the contaminants in there. So what I've got here is just a puck of lead that's, as far as I know, pretty pure. And although this is probably enough for this project, I want to get all this lead melted down anyway for a future project that's coming, honestly, probably in like a year. So make sure you subscribe for that. So I'm gonna melt this down, and then once I have a pool of lead, then I'll start adding this stuff in slowly and scooping off the imperfections. And I've also got a thermometer here so that I can make sure I'm at the right temperature. Yep, there we go. got this long rod. It's not as dense as I'd like it to have been, but whatever. And that's gonna go inside of this piece here. And these ended up turning a lot more into strings than BBs. So I'm just gonna use a pair of wire cutters and cut them up into little bits so I can mix them with epoxy and shove them in all the little gaps I have. I've got everything sanded and primed. I've got my mug of little bits of lead that I've cut up. Let's see if I can dump them in. I've packed as much lead in there as I can. It honestly didn't add as much weight as I thought it would, but it did add some. Uh, so now I'm gonna use some Five minute epoxy, wedge them all in there. Also, so I don't get any rattle because right now there's a little bit of rattle and I do not want that. I'm gonna take the lead chunk, wedge it in there. And now the overkill hammer. This piece is in, so now this some good heft to it. One thing I didn't realize is that this epoxy smells like sulfur. Kind of made a mess there, but Got the lead epoxied in. Once that cures, I can sand it flush and start assembling this thing and get some real color on it. While this cures, before I can paint anything, I'm gonna start working on the handles. Now, I printed these just as references. I wanna do an actual wood handle. There's a piece of curly maple I happen to have that is just thick enough for both pieces. There you go. So I'm gonna cut off a piece of this and start shaping. Got my chunk cut out. I'm gonna cut it in half, trace the 3D printed parts, and cut out the basic shape on the bandsaw. So one downside to the epoxy was apparently it didn't get all the way down, so when I shook it, there was a little bit of rattling. So what I did 
I drilled a little hole that I can easily cover up with the paint and I just blasted super glue into there and now no rattling at all. We'll start painting these pieces. These two pieces here get gold. These, all these ones get a silver base coat and then most of them are getting black on top of the silver. That silver allows me to then scrape off some of the black and give a weathered look uh, if I want to or if I accidentally drop it in the future and black paint comes off, it exposes silver and looks naturally weathered. The epoxy is now completely dried. I have filed it down smooth. You can see I actually nicked some of the lead there. So now I'm going to stick this piece on. That's officially stuck together and I just gotta seal this gap. All the seams bonded, and once it's fully dry, I can sand it and then I can finally start painting this last piece. This paint job is pretty simple. Got some black paint here. Almost all these pieces are just getting a total coat of black, except for this one that has this section in the middle that needs to be silver. So I'll just mask that off like this. And there we go, completely masked up. Masked up, masked off, whatever. All right, it's time to paint. Well, that was easy. Sanded the Bondo down. It doesn't look great at the moment, but it'll look fine once the paint's in. You can see there's the hole that I plugged. Black paint is now on. Uh, to do the quick reveal of the masked off area on this part while the talking. Now that I've got all these parts painted, I'm going to assemble them. Then I'm gonna switch over and do the wood grips and then I can do the final weathering and make the little display stand. The two best parts of painting the prop are weathering and peeling up masking tape. The top edge looks pretty good. I mean, it does look very odd right now because it's unweathered, but that'll be fixed once I get in there and switch up the colors a little bit. glued everything together except for this piece because it goes right here and I want to finish the wood first. At the moment it does look a little fake. You can tell it kind of looks like a cheap toy because all the colors are so, they pop so much and they're so uniform. So that's what I'm going to change with the weathering which I'll do after they finish the handle. Like for example here I'm going to dull this down, make it not look so bright. I'm going to remove some of the black paint exposing the silver. I actually got some rub and buff. I also need to color the trigger gold and make this thing not so bright and just do that kind of stuff to make it look like it's actually being used and isn't just a thing that came straight out of the factory. So it's woodworking time. Got my two pieces here, got my pencil marks, gonna work it down, the pencil marks, and I'm gonna just start shaping it using these as a guide. Cue the timeline. So I've done as much as I'm going to do with the belt sander. I've got the initial step in there, I've got it down to a rough thickness, and I've got it mostly fit to size. You can see here, most of it fits, there's a few spots where it's not quite there. I'm going to hand sand the rest. I've got the handle mostly done, I need to still hollow out the inside a little bit so I can fill this with more lead. I've got the shape basically down, just a little bit of more sanding and then some weathering on the wood before I stain it. And just a fun fact here. Uh, most Star Wars guns are actually based on real guns. Uh, most of the original trilogy's guns are World War II. I think almost all of the guns are World War II. Uh, this one's actually a Bergman 1896, I believe. I'll put a picture right here so you can see the similarities. So it's actually very similar. They just take an existing gun and glue on a few new bits. And the reason is because during the first Star Wars movie filming, their budget was very small. So what they actually did is they rented a bunch of surplus World War II weapons and they couldn't actually modify them because they were rented. So they just glued bits on to make the Star Wars guns because they had to return them. I've got my tungsten carbide rotary carver here and I'm just gonna hollow this out a little bit, make a little more room for lead so I can get a little bit more weight in the hand. got these carved out so now I'm actually gonna beat these up a tiny bit uh, maybe just whack them with something just to give them a little bit of more wear just so it seems like this is an actual grip on a gun that's been used by a Mandalorian bounty hunter out in space uh, and then I'm gonna stain them then fill the backs with lead stick them on and it's time to weather that thing just whack it with this pair of wire cutters put some little dents in it nothing crazy 
Just the kind of thing you'd get if you drop it. I don't want to actually drop the thing because this is plastic, so it'll break. But if I just put some nicks in it, it'll give it a little bit more character. Is there a different shape thing for this file? Okay, what else? What else do I got? This wrench. Yeah, see, normally you don't do this kind of stuff to your woodworking projects. I don't know, does that even come up on camera? You can see those little tiny dents everywhere. And the kind of stuff that you'd get being a bounty hunter. And, I don't know, he gets his gun taken away sometimes or thrown. So now I'm going to stain it. I'm going to be using this red oak because it's what I have. little tip on rubber gloves that I see a lot of people not doing. Uh, if you buy rubber gloves a size down from your actual glove size, they fit much better and you don't get all the wrinkles and you have much more dexterity in them. Can make them a little harder to get on at times. Just wipe that on. It's actually not quite as dark as I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna do a coat just to make it even. And I'm actually gonna go get a darker stain. Pitching this out for dark walnut. Actually, you can see a little bit more of the damage I did. You can see the weathering. I kinda like that. There we go. I'm gonna glue one of these on, fill it with lead, and then glue the other side on. Now I flip that over. We've got this nice little pocket to fill with lead. Love the smell of sulfur in the evening. Not really, but why not quote Apocalypse Now? Misquote Apocalypse Now when you can. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and waste some super glue. And this super glue is expensive, so if you don't mind, check out the link in the description. Got some Amazon affiliate links and a link to get you up to $500 off of Glowforge. I haven't used the Glowforge yet in this project, but I will make the stand with it, so that's a valid referral link, I'd say. But yeah, you'd be surprised how expensive super glue can get. I also need to get some more super glue activator. It's the stuff you spray on super glue, make it cure instantly. I ran out. One thing I've learned from this is that it is not worth making your own BBs for this. It'd be much easier to go through the process of making a wood mold for this weird shape and just casting a chunk. And it would also be denser and heavier that way. Next time I need to put lead weights on something, I will do that. We have a completed blaster, physically at least. Still needs a lot of work on paint and weathering. And I'm gonna bring you in close and I'm gonna start weathering this thing. To start the weathering process, what's new to me is I got some silver rub and buff here. I get a little bit on my finger and just start to brush that on. That actually looks really good. But as I rub my finger on it, it's gonna essentially be the same as scratching it. So anywhere that my finger gets the rub and buff on will be a place that could have had paint removed. And now one place that I like to do is right around here where your finger would be a good trigger discipline, which I'm guessing Mando does. I've done a lot on this side. Never know, you might shoot at lefty sometimes. Not sure what that would be from, but if I blend the edges a little bit, it makes it more realistic as a scratch rather than just a blob of paint. Now the final wash before the clear coat. Got a little bit of water here and some black paint. I'm gonna mix the water down the black paint a lot. So what this will do is basically just dirty it up and dull the brightness of some spots like this and this. That is the weathering complete. I did some painting on the handle too, to give it a little more depth, especially with those scratches I made. I've dulled down all the silver, especially up here, so it doesn't pop out as much. I'm very happy with this. It has a nice heft to it with all the lead in there. I'm just gonna hit this with a clear coat to protect the paint job, and then cut out a stand on the laser cutter. Just using a, where is it? Just a crystal clear gloss. Austin, a clear coat makes it look even better, which is one thing I really like about clear coat. While this is drying, we could compare my current most recent paint job to my paint job from three or four years ago. You can see I did a slightly different technique. 
I still like both of them, but I do think this one's a little bit better. And maybe I'll redo the blaster someday. I've actually been thinking of redoing one in metal, so maybe that'll happen. Got the stand cut out. Got a nice little time lapse going there. Got the Mandalorian logo. This is actually the exact same stand I made for the, uh, the Han Solo blaster. It just happens to fit. And this thing goes there. Got my sandpaper. Just gonna clean up the burn marks because I did not bother to mask the wood. I'm gonna glue this in. Nothing special, just super glue again, as usual. Very useful stuff. You should always have super glue and duct tape at all times. They are the best fixing tools out there. complete the Mandalorian's blaster it took me a lot longer than I expected it to but it's finally done so if you enjoyed this video uh, click the like button subscribe subscribe now do it subscribe and like there you go now that you've liked and subscribed uh, next video should actually be coming soon you won't have to wait another six months for my next video here's a little sneak peek Why is rum gone? and that's all you're gonna get but anyway hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>